All right, so I'm Javier Melis, um, and I would like to talk to you about uh, OpenAvila and Ansible in general. Well, I'm going to talk about Ansible in particular, but this is a talk a bit about um, configuration management and why do you need, what do you need, or how it can help you when uh, deploying your applications, <laughs> when de deploying your your applications in in a cloud like OpenNebula. We have two, uh, I'm gonna talk about two applications, two, two softwares, Ansible and OpenNebula, and they deal with different tasks. OpenNebula, as you know, is uh, the virtual management. Uh, it's a cloud management platform. It deploys virtual infrastructure, and it does stuff like um, uh, managing your network, managing your uh, disk images, your storage, and things like this. Uh, you choose a base image you start from, or an image that has already been cooked, and you deploy it. And now you have your virtual machine, and it's running, and you can, you know, operate. You can, you can uh, interact with the VM, and that's uh, that's um, that's the whole purpose of OpenNebula, right? But OpenNebula stays at stays at that level. OpenNebula will not go through. Will not. It's not designed to uh, orchestrate your application. You have to find another way to orchestrate your applications. This is when something like Ansible or Puppet or even Docker comes in handy. Um, what can you do with OpenNebula alone? With OpenNebula, we have the, in order to bootstrap our application, we have several tools. We, we have the contextualization which allows, which allows us to do the networking, allows us to you know, run scripts when the VM starts, create some users, uh, set some passwords, public SSH key, uh, configure, uh, SS, configure um, um, your disk size, your PCI devices, you know, lots of things that, you know, will get your application to a good place to start with. Um, so yeah, the general workflow is that you come to OpenNebula, you select an image, uh, like an Ubuntu, and then, you know, you, you, you add a script, like, okay, I want to download this uh, Apache web server. I want to configure this and that. And I want to, you know, um, I don't know, like create a static configuration so that it, uh, it starts with a, with a, it starts exactly how you want it to start. When you deploy the virtual machine, you of course can uh, decide how big the virtual machine is gonna be. Uh, if you want several disks, if you want an extra swap partition, if you want uh, to several CPUs and all these kind of things. And one of the most important things is that you can ask the user questions. You can, uh, you can prepare your VM so you can ask them questions like, imagine this is a VM that, that it's, uh, its sole purpose is to deploy a WordPress blog. You can ask the user, okay, so what is the name of your blog? And when the VM starts, it will download the, the WordPress application and it will, um, configure the blog to have this, this title. This is something that we saw yesterday, and I hope that all these things are clear to you. So uh, to sum it all up, sum it all up, OpenNebula deploys the VM, OpenNebula bootstraps the VM, it configures the operating system in such a way that it's gonna be useful for the application you're gonna run on top of it. But uh, that's about it. Like OpenNebula, for OpenNebula, VMs are black boxes. You do, you, you're not going to see inside the application, you're not gonna get any feedback, as to whether the application is running or not. For instance, when you deploy a virtual machine, it may happen that the virtual machine uh, uh, does not boot up properly. And this is something that, there are some ways to detect this from OpenNebula, but uh, for OpenNebula, as I said, it's, a, it's mostly a black box. And if your application is not uh, work, uh, working properly, it's something that you need to deal some uh, in a different way. So this is when a configuration management tool comes in, come, comes in handy. You want to manage your application. You want to evolve it. You want to you know, change the application at some point to do this and that. You want to upgrade the application. You, know, you want to manage the application that sits inside. So this is why um, you know, uh, joining forces between OpenNebula, within the cloud management platform, and a configuration management pl platform is very useful, right? Because you get to you know, cover the full stack. You get to deploy it exactly how you want, even you know, make changes using OpenNebula throughout the life, life cycle of the VM. In case you wanna resize it or do some things to the actual hardware, this is sustaining virtual infrastructure. 
But if you want to play with the VM, with the application itself, you have to do it otherwise, uh, in some other fashion. Okay, so this is when, so I'm gonna exemplify how we have done this with uh, Ansible and how we recommend you to, well, not, not recommend you, but to give you some ideas that might come, might be interesting to you. So what is the, how can I integrate these two pieces of software? How can I integrate a cloud management platform and a cloud and configuration management tool? Well, basically, OpenEvla knows a lot of stuff of the virtual machine. It knows who it belongs to. It knows what the operating system is. It knows how many interfaces it has. What are the IPs? It knows uh, if you have asked any question to the user that's deploying the VM. OpenEvla knows about that. And if you are able to send this information over to your configuration management uh, software, it's a big win for the configuration management software because it already has the answers to many of the questions that are very important to design your application. So basically, our integration consists in that. The idea that we are gonna extract some data from Open Nebula, and we're gonna push it to our configuration management tool, so our configuration management tool knows how to do with uh, your application without, you know, without any extra user input. How do you do this in particular with Ansible? There are many, you know, there are other configuration management tools and each one of them has its own way of doing this. But with um, Ansible, uh, there's one thing that they have that it's the dynamic inventory. The inventory is simply a document or a, you know, it's generally a JSON document that contains the information of all the virtual machines. Of all the, not virtual machines, right? Because Ansible works with servers, it can be virtual machines or not, but it has a, it's a YAML file, uh, sorry, a JSON file with all this information. And inside this, you know, you, you get one entry per host, and inside this entry, you get all the information of this uh, virtual machine. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna uh, write a, an API uh, script using the OpenEbla API that asks OpenEbla for this information and formats it to the, uh, you know, to the, uh, uh, to the format that Ansible can read. How do we do, how do we extract this data? Basically we're doing one VM list, you know, to extract all this data. And uh, we're parsing this uh, XML because of one VM list in, in OpenEvula returns it in, X, in, in XML. And then we are going to process it and make just some JSON object that we're gonna send to, to Ansible. This is as I said, simply uh, exact how Ansible works, right? Once you have this ready, now you can uh, uh, launch your Ansible uh, playbooks. This uh, command simply uh, executes the inventory, which is this script I told you about, and it executes this playbook on top of this, of, on top of this inventory. So the inventory is in the JSON format. It includes all the virtual machine information. So in this script that we are writing, I'm extracting all the user data, all the information of the VM that OpenEvla knows about it. And uh, it can even know if the VM has properly booted up. Because in OpenEvula we have a component which we discussed it, discussed it yesterday, which is the one gate component. It's a REST API, and when the VM successfully boots, it will send an API notification to OpenEvula and will say, hey, this virtual machine is ready. Only, once the, only when this happens will the uh, data from this virtual machine be sent to the configuration, to Ansible in this case. But in Ansible, you also need to provide what kind of role does a particular machine belong to. Like, is this machine a, a, a server? Is this machine a Hadoop node? What, you know, what is this? And uh, the inventory that I'm gonna show, show you extracts the, this data from two different points. It can, depending on the label, that I'm gonna show you how labels work, the label you assign in OpenEvula, this is gonna be the, this is gonna be the role, right? So if in OpenEvula you go and you assign a label to a particular VM, this is gonna be the role that is gonna be used in Ansible. Or if the, if the user is asked uh, the question, hey, what is the Ansible role that you wanna to apply to this uh, VM? This will also be read by the inventory, the, by the dynamic inventory, and applied to the, and written into the, into the inventory script. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how, how this works. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna execute the inventory script. The inventory script 
uh, this moment is not uh, printing out anything, right? It's empty because we don't have, we haven't deployed yet any, vir yet any virtual machines. This is a, a JSON. This is a friendlier format. It's basically in here. You will see all the all, met, all the metadata of the of the host, and in this section, you will see uh, all the groups and what virtual machines or servers belong to which group. Okay, so I have this um, this CentOS template which I'm going to deploy. I'm going to click on instantiate. Okay, I'm going to deploy it manually so it goes faster. Right, because um, VR, because I haven't, uh, okay, that's a good question, but, um, so as I said before, uh, in, in Ansible, you have to tell the virtual, you have to tell Ansible to what role does a virtual machine belong to. And those two virtual machines that already have deployed, I don't want to manage them with Ansible, so I have not told, uh, I haven't told uh, OpenEbula that they belong to any Ansible role. It's simply I have not applied a label, right? I'm using, I'm gonna be using now the labels. So if you look at this, uh, they don't have any labels, so they are not appearing in the, in the, in the, in the, in the list. Okay, so if I execute it again, I get nothing because I haven't yet applied the label to the VM. So I'm gonna apply it now. And I simply come here, I'm gonna say, okay, so this is Ansible and it's gonna be a worker node. Okay, so it's uh, Ansible. If it's, if, it's, uh, if it's in the top Ansible uh, label, it's gonna appear there, but now it's even gonna go to the worker uh, role. So I'm gonna execute this now, and now I have all the information. The VM belongs to the, to the all group, because this is the group where all the VMs are, but it also belongs to the worker group which is uh, the group I have specified by defining the label, okay? And all the data that I have from the virtual machine is here, and it's available to, to Ansible. So it knows how to connect to this virtual machine. It knows how to, it knows what the SSH public key, what is the architecture, what is the size of the disk, and all this data, it's, it's ready to be used by Ansible. Um, okay, so I'm gonna run setup. Okay, five minutes. Uh, I'm gonna run setup. And this is actually connecting, Ansible is actually connecting to the virtual machine and probing from some data. And this is how the, and you know, just because it's green, it's working, right? So it did get into the virtual machine and everything is going fine. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, destroy this virtual machine. I'm gonna instantiate another one to show you the other, the other way of, operating. In here, uh, in this other template, this is not the template I instantiated before, in this template it's asking me what is the Ansible role. I'm gonna say, okay, this is web. This is the, the web role. I'm gonna uh, instantiate this and we'll go to running a couple of minutes. But one of the things that this template has that the other one doesn't have is that in the context section, I have selected that report ready to one gate. So only when the VM boots up, right? So right now the VM is running, but if I click on inventory, it's empty because it has not yet booted up. So only it will appear, it will only appear in the inventory when it finishes booting up, which is very convenient because you cannot launch an Ansible uh, a playbook if SSH is not up and if the, if the VM has not finished uh, deploying. Right now it has finished and all the data is here, right? Okay, so just uh, the final uh, demo is I'm gonna, I have this very small uh, Ansible, demo, Ansible demo YAML. It's simply applying this to all the hosts and it's dynamically, grab, dynamically grabbing the Ansible role. The Ansible role is a Nebula property that we have assigned when we created this uh, VM, which is, uh, it's here. It contains web, right? So it should be, so basically this uh, Ansible recipe, what it's doing, it's writing the MOTD with, okay, welcome to the 
web role because it's gonna be it's gonna be web role. Okay, so I'm executing this. It has applied this task, and now if I SSH the virtual machine, I see that it it did it did work. So what is the so the to sum it all up, the whole idea is that what you want to do is OpenEvla has lots of information. And it's ex it's very very useful to your configuration management tool. It has an API that is very simple. Uh, the the um, the code that uh, that we use to to create this script is uh, it's just uh, asking OpenEvla for the VMs and you know parsing a couple of uh, specific variables that we you know it's. We, they are designed to be the the the, the ansible variables, and um, and yeah, basically that's it. And I want, just wanted to mention one last thing. Um, we I have divided this into two steps, right? I have launched the VM, and then I have manually waited and it has booted up to deploy the ansible playbook. This has, can be automated, and this is the next step in this. And we have done this with uh, with. Um, in a project that we're participating in, which is security.direct. And the idea is that we have a component that is basically watching Open Nebula. And every time it discovers there's a new virtual machine or a new service, it goes, uh, requests the dynamic inventory and launches the playbook dynamically. It does so in this particular case using the Ansible Tower API. It's not uh, open source Ansible, it's the Ansible Tower part, which is, um, um, yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's something you need to pay for. But it's not necessary. We use it simply as a job queue. So you could you could be sending the Ansible play, play, playbook uh, state, um, uh, commands if you have a, a job queue for this. So yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, it's in GitHub. I w yeah, uh, the address is. It's uh, J Mellis. Uh, slash one dash tools, and it's in here, Ansible inventory. And everything's here. In, inside this uh, repo, uh, it's like we have some uh, commands that we use uh, with OpenEvla, like one SSH to, to SSH directly to the VM, one ping, one IP, you know, to, it's, it's a wrapper, uh, wrapper around OpenEvla commands that are, uh, yeah, we find them useful. Sorry? Um, no, I, we haven't um, thought about it. It's, it's uh, yeah, you can download it from here. Any other questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>